In this video, we're gonna look at a blue ink by Sailor Yuki Akari. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description, you're gonna find a link to the blue ink playlist, so if you wanna see some other blue inks, that's down there. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade rather well, thus pretty dark. Quick starts dark, gets light and gets dark again. Brown starts at a mid-tone and works its way lighter. Seven seconds to dry. Now medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade brown going from darker to lighter. Quick going from darker to lighter to darker, 12 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both doesn't show a lot of color variation, although it is there in the writing, but the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a D-like alpha with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. And I'm looking at the camera above and I'm hoping this does come through on a video. The scrubby for both show no color variation and we're really not getting it in the writing. And a smear test you can't recover if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you see this really does flee from the water all the way up and it's a very light blue all the way up. It only looks darker when it's gathered into a, a spot together. Now the one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water and we don't see any difference of them. Meaning I expect no resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade as the goes light to dark, quick goes darker to lighter to darker. Brown works darker to lighter and nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade, over goes light to dark, brown goes darker to lighter to darker, fox goes lighter to darker, 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't show much color variation and we're really not getting it. And the smear test, I still don't think you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handled itself much better than I expected. It did lighten it up just a little bit more than normal, but you could technically use it if you wanted to highlight in your notes after using this. It's just too light and I don't think I would personally. Water, there's more of it left than I expected, but it is reactivating and given more than 30 seconds, I expect it would get it all, but it is really only lifting the top. Pen flush is starting to show some of the white of the paper coming through. Now the good news is, and as would be expected, it only took water to get this out of my pen. And the one third bleach solution completely obliterates it, but you're not gonna need it. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. This is done not to look at performance differences because it's basically the same paper with a different background. But I like to do this to be able to see what would happen to this light blue when it has a yellow back. And we see it is much more translucent. It's really completely altering this tone. It goes from a very light blue to a very light green. Something to be aware of if you work in a professional environment and write on yellow paper regularly. 
For the inks tested, the average viscosity is 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Sailor's Yuki Akari has a viscosity of 2.08, making it just a little bit wetter than normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests are done and all of that stuff, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at G. Lalo paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some shade, Yuki goes from darker or lighter to darker. Sailor goes lighter to darker. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade as quick goes light to dark to light. The goes light to dark. Brown goes dark to light and four seconds to dry. The medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade, quick goes darker to lighter to darker. Brown goes light to dark, over goes light to dark, 10 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, we're really not getting it, and a smear test you couldn't recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor's Yuki Akari has an average dry time of 13 seconds, putting it right on the edge, but still normal. The last writing sample is done on original crown mill paper. We have no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading as brown goes darker to lighter. Over goes lighter to darker, five seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine, just a hair lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Over goes from light to dark, jumps from light to dark. Quick from dark to light to much darker than most of the writing. 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show almost no color variation, but it's not too bad in the writing, and the smear test you still could not recover if you smeared while you wrote. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Yuki Akari, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Being a very, very light blue, I wanted to go with a nice brown that shaded very well, and I chose J. Herban's Lee de Te. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is a link to different color playlists. So what do I think of Sailor's Yuki Akari? I'm gonna be very short with this. Baby blue is not my thing, and I don't like it, but for that reason. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? It tends to put down a fairly decent tone with most every pen. It shades pretty well almost all the time. But if baby blue isn't your thing and you want it to just be a little bit darker to be easier to read, then I suggest going with a very wet pen regardless what nib size you choose. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next one, we're gonna take a look at Mont Blanc's Blue Hour.